distinguished world famous orator who dedicated their lives to convey the message of peace came together at one platform the international islamic conference with one vision with one mission peace mission I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace mission. Peaceful, peaceful, peace. Salam, salam, salam. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Mumbai is the commercial capital of India and one of the prominent cities of the world. Off its Eastern Express Highway at Sion lies a 30-acre expanse of open land, the Somaya Ground, an ideal location for any international summit to take place. The International Islamic Peace Conference and Exhibition was held precisely at this venue. The preparation and planning for the conference was carried on for 10 months prior to the event. It was indeed a gigantic effort of building a magnificent setup for the proposed event virtually from scratch. Workers, technicians, set and decor specialists, art directors, visualizers and designers, among others, worked round the clock to transform the calm environs of the location into a global kaleidoscope promoting Islam and peace. People from various socio-cultural backgrounds from India and abroad turned up in large numbers to witness the conference. Their registration was done at the entry. For the safety and security of all present at the venue, a meticulously planned security system, adequately manned and monitored with the state-of-the-art equipment and technology was organized. There were special provisions for the distinguished international speakers invited and the guests under the special attention and direction of Dr. Zakir Naik, the visionary and architect behind the conference. Included in the permanent 10-day program for gaining knowledge and convenience available at the Peace Conference was also the AC Exhibition Hall with more than 300 panels on Islamic tenets and 50 models displayed on Islam with references from the glorious Quran and Hadith. There were trained volunteers who had been especially assigned the job of explaining the importance of the message of Islam portrayed in the panels and the relevance of the models to the visitors. On the opening day itself, there was a press conference where the media fraternity of the city had gathered to hear and know about the objective of the conference and put forward their queries. So we have to speak the truth. But when we speak the truth, we should not hurt anyone. And we cannot malign anyone without any reason, without any proof. So if someone... The objective of the 10-day peace conference was to create awareness among the people about the essence of Islam and clear the cobwebs, misconceptions and prejudice about Islam in their minds. There have been for long deep-rooted causes leading to misunderstanding, hatred and distortion of the truth about Islam, which this conference aimed at correcting. In their talks, the various intellectuals and scholars on Islam put forth their views on several subjects and issues related to an Islamic way of life, touching the common man and society alike, with much appreciation from the audience for the same. 23rd November 2007. This was the first conference of its kind in the history of the Islamic world. With a spacious venue of over 30 acres, 
audiences attending in hundreds of thousands to witness the 10-day conference and professional recording for television of the event from the first to the last day. The conference began on a note of piety with the recital of the Tirat. <laughs> First time in the world, more than 20 of the best selected English-speaking Islamic scholars and orators of international stature came together on one platform. The International Islamic Peace Conference and Exhibition was telecast live around the world on Peace TV, which has an estimated reach of over 75 million viewers worldwide. Dr. Bilal Phillips, Canada, Yusuf Estes, USA, Abdul Rahim Green, UK, Yasir Fazaga, USA, Hussein Yi, Malaysia, Riaz Ansari, USA, Yasir Al Qadi, USA, Dr. Jafar Idris, Sudan, Salim Al Amri, UAE. Dr. Ahmad Ibn Saifuddin, Saudi Arabia. Asim Al Hakim, Saudi Arabia. Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad, Egypt. Mukhtar Magrui, USA. And Dr. Zakir Naik, India. Dr. Zakir Naik, the illustrious and world renowned scholar on Islam and comparative religion, has long been committed to the noble purpose of spreading the word of Islam. His style of oratory bears an uncanny resemblance to his mentor and the person who has influenced him most in making Dawa his passion for life, Sheikh Ahmad Dita. From the doctor of the body to the doctor of the soul, it's none other than late Sheikh Ahmad Didat. The live relay was coordinated and monitored from a fully equipped and organized control room at the venue, replete with contemporary technologies. 24th November 2007. Yasir Qadi shared his thoughts, analyses and studies in his public talk on the unity and disunity in the light of Quran and Sunnah. Emphasizing on the importance of family, Hussein Yi spoke about the family rules in Islam. It's a good work that Peace TV are doing nowadays, that is to be peace around people, to know Islam better and to know the truth of Islam and to love the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Enunciating the role of the conscience of the individual, Riyaz Ansari lectured on the freedom of conscience in Islam. Considering the nature of the human race to demarcate humanity on the basis of caste, creed and race, Dr. Bilal Phillips gave his expert exposition on the topic Islam and racism. Throughout the show, elaborate security arrangements were maintained with hundreds of cameras on strict surveillance of the entire venue and hundreds of professional and IRF security personnel deployed. To combat untoward emergencies, considering the scope of the event and the huge crowds present, there were ready facilities of a fire brigade, an ambulance and a medical aid center. The much-awaited speech by Dr. Zakir Naik on Is the Quran God's Word was telecast live across the world as he held the large audience in rapt attention by his logical and convincing presentation about the glorious Quran. Though Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he has done and performed hundreds of miracles, but he never emphasized them. And we Muslims, we mainly boast of his ultimate miracle, that is, the glorious Quran. I'm Namita. If Islam is truly the way of life, then why are people taking so long in realizing and accepting it? The straight path is not always easy to follow. Okay, fine, Islam may be good, 
but I don't want to stop alcohol. I don't want to stop going out flirting with girls. I don't want to stop having coke. So when you learn, there may be certain hitches that may come. If now I accept Islam, that means for 40 years I was a fool. Oh, I better not accept Islam. Some may think, what will my mother say? What will my father say? So all these are obstacles, sister. And believe me, sister, this is only a perception. Our job, sister, is to present the truth. Whether a person accepts it or not, it depends upon him. So this life, sister, is a test for the hereafter. Everything you realize, the truth you don't follow. You ask me the question, I'll ask you the same question. Then what is taking you so much time to accept the truth, sister? With your blessing, I accept Islam and repeat the kalma. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulallah. Highly influenced and spellbound by the righteous and novel message of the conference, many people embraced Islam and reverted to their true faith. Dr. Zakir Naik spoke with his usual passion and informed candor, followed by his infallible answers to probing questions on the topic. I've heard him too often, but it's always refreshing to hear him speak with the passion and the vigor that he does. Zakir Naik, I wish I can be 1% like him. Zakir Naik is, alhamdulillah, he's a wonderful orator in the field of compared religion and dawah. He's doing an extremely good job. 25th November 2007, Mukhtar Maghrawi spoke about the essential and noble virtues of justice and magnanimity, the pedestal of peace for real harmony and well-being. The delegates' lounge was a comfortable and cozy space for the invited international speakers to relax, deliberate, share and interact with each other. It provided an apt ambience for the guests to network and socialize. For the comfort of the audience who attended the morning and afternoon lecture sessions, a special air-conditioned hall was constructed over an acre of land, which had a cooling capacity of over 600 tons. Criticizing blatant consumerism to which the world has succumbed, Abdul Rahim Green spoke vehemently and realistically on the curse of the consumer society. There was an ever-increasing surge of crowds thronging the conference venue daily. It's a great program and a very good speakers, very dedicated speakers. Yasser Qadi deliberated and analyzed the topic with deep personal concern as he spoke on current state of the Ummah. Yusuf Estes pondered on the topic can Islam still work in today's world? Muhammad or Rasulullah, I understood, but how am I going to communicate? The needs of children were also taken care of, and there was a special play area arranged for their recreation. Parents could leave their children in the safe hands of caretakers so that they could concentrate on and derive maximum benefit from the conference, talks, and the exhibition. It means Yasser Fazaga spoke about the most common reason for violence in the history of the world, namely, violence in the name of God. Because part of the teachings of Muhammad wasallam has always been a message of hope. South African Islamic Nasheed vocalist Zan Bhika held the audience in rapt attention with his crooning lilt devoted to the glory of Islam. <laughs> from the UAE, Ahmad Bukhater, performed soulful numbers in praise of the tenets of Islam, 
holding the audience captive to his mellifluous skills. There were no musical instruments used in the Nasheed performances. November 2007. With each passing day, the crowds kept on increasing, the regulars getting many newcomers, relatives and friends along too. I've seen several exhibitions in India and even abroad. But the exhibition of this magnitude, I mean, you have taken care of all facilities of visitors. I have never seen, I, I can never conceive an idea that a religious exhibition could have Beautiful gates. Yasir Padi threw light on the need of man to submit his will to the will of Allah. This aspect was propounded by him in his talk, The Journey of Worship. Illustrating the significance of children, Dr. Ahmad ibn Saifuddin dealt with the topic, How did the Prophet deal with children? There was a food court serving just about every kind of food to cater to the diverse tastes and preferences for the people present at the conference. Yusuf Idris spoke on the topic, supplication of worship. Dr. Shoaib Sayyid, the research manager and Islamic orator at IRF, has been with Dr. Zakir Naik for more than 15 years since inception of the IRF. He has imparted Dawa training to many young Muslim students. He has had debates with Christian missionaries and delivered many public talks the world over. He spoke on the sole power of Allah over the functioning of the universe in his talk on Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. Despite a hectic schedule and round-the-clock activity to manage and control the ongoing schedule and activities of the conference, the day-to-day -day creative decisions were meticulously planned and discussed to avoid confusion and lack of direction and then systematically implemented. The need for peace within one's own self is mandatory for experience and preaching peace to the outside world. The importance of this truism was handled by Mukhtar Maghrawi in the topic aptly called Peace Internal for Peace External. Dr. Bilal Phillips enunciated on the most valuable piece of sacred literature in the history of the world in his deliberation, the Quran, a message to mankind. To add grandeur and avoid monotony to the presentation, the color, design and appearance of the set were changed every day. This maintained the liveliness and interest both in the proceedings and amongst the audience. 27th November 2007 The eager and curious hordes of people kept streaming in large numbers to satisfy their thirst for correct information and knowledge about Islam and they certainly were not disappointed. The conference was not intended to be one-way communication. There was an open question and answer session after each talk, where people in the audience present were given ample time and opportunity to ask questions and have their doubts cleared by the speakers. Allah will ask you about your own deeds. Dr. Jafar Idris explained in specific terms the miracle of legislative consistency. What are your thoughts on the peace conference? I attended so many conferences in my life in, so in different parts of the world. And I think this is one of the best of, it might be the best conference that, uh, that I attended. What do you think of Dr. Zakir Naim? I, I met him uh, before several times. I think he is, uh, he is himself something like a miracle. <laughs> Salim al-Amri waxed eloquently on the indelible importance of faith in human life as he spoke on the topic, let's revive our Iman. 
The radiance of the glorious Quran was aptly reflected in the speech of Dr. Mamdu Muhammad as he lectured on the topic impact of the Quran on the hearts. I am really very impressed by the way it is organized, the level of performance of the people who are working, and also you can feel, you can touch the sincerity, although this is something that we cannot see by our eyes, but you feel it by the way they welcome you and they host you and they make everything easy for you. Abdur Rahim Green deliberated on the cultural paradoxes and dilemma surrounding us in our modern society in his talk on culture confusion. What are your thoughts on the peace conference? Well, I, it's fantastic. I'm a, a great fan of, alhamdulillah, myself, Dr. Zaki Naik and all the work that he does, especially, uh, not just him personally, but in terms of the work that he's doing and Peace TV is doing. And uh, I think the conference is a fantastic event and a great opportunity, alhamdulillah, for Muslims to learn more about their religion and for non-Muslims to find out about Islam. True to its essence, the Peace Conference had elaborate arrangements for Salah, including hundreds of taps for wudu. The Salah area had facilities for thousands of Musallis and there were separate arrangements for ladies. Hussein Yi threw light on one of the greatest virtues of Islam as he expressed his thoughts on the topic Islam and secularism. Uh, what are your thoughts about Peace TV? I'm sure it will benefit a lot of Muslims around the globe. And uh, through my own observation, Peace TV have embarked in a very noble project because they are very selective in the people that they choose to make sure that the message of Islam is being delivered properly based on the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad They may be financial. Reflecting on the nature of rapidly changing times, Yasir Fazaga shared his observations, thoughts and proactive solutions for problems of humanity when he spoke on the topic Activism for Change, 28th November 2007. Omar Dexter, in the reverse session, explained his internal transformation as he reminisced on his own journey, how I came to Islam. The journey back to Islam is always like a breath of fresh air as one encounters immortal light as one comes out from a tunnel of darkness. This experience was aptly put forth by Isa Washington, another revert session speaker in his talk on From Ignorance to Islam. I'm overwhelmed to be here. I've gained a lot of experience. I've seen many mashayikh, alhamdulillah. That itself, seeing so many shuyukh come from all around the world and to actually participate in this event, this is overwhelming. The great popularity and looking up to Dr. Zakir Naik by the masses was manifested whenever he broke from his busy schedule to keep a check on the actual management and smooth functioning of the conference on the ground. Athar Khan, a student of Dr. Zakir Naik and research executive at IRF, is blossoming into a dynamic speaker, following in the footsteps of his mentor. Athar Khan expressed this with erudition on Christianity in a new light when he delved on crucifixion and Islamic perspective. Yasir Fazaga elaborated on the nuances and articulation of character and exemplified its importance and expression in his talk on the six C's of character. Yusuf Estes spoke on the topic close to the hearts of many concerned parents and leaders of the Ummah, our children, our future. This is really an individual effort from Dr. Dakar and his group. To capture every moment of the peace conference for live television and record it for future telecasts on television, as well as for audio, video, DVD and other formats, a production team of over 500 creative and technical persons endeavored dedicatedly and simultaneously along with their tons of equipments, which included 27 DG Beta cameras, 8 Jimmy Jibs of 40 feet height and an Aquila crane of 80 feet height. 29th November 2007 
an all comprehensive exhibition on Islam was on simultaneously as the peace conference was in progress. Next to it was the Halal Expo, displaying a vast array of goods and merchandise which were strictly halal, that is, legal within the Islamic purview and available for sale. So you're enjoying the conference so far? Yes, there's no doubt about it. It has been planned. The whole conference, you know, in a 30-acre place like this, it has been planned in a beautiful way. Dr. Mamdu Muhammad spoke on human nature which leads to a human being's downfall sooner or later when he discussed the topic, the disease of arrogance. Dr. Jafar Idris deliberated upon the essentials of humankind's convictions as he threw light on the topic, reason and the true religion. There was a book exhibition hosted by the Islamic Book International displaying a vast variety of books and literature on various tapes and aspects of Islam. Enlightening the public on a new dimension to today's ecological challenges, Mukhtar Maghravi provided a huge impact when he spoke categorically on the topic, peace with the environment. I find the conference very uh, educational. I find that it contains a good variety of scholars. Acknowledging the all-pervasive power of the media, Dr. Ahmad ibn Saifuddin eulogized on the world of today and how to deal with it media-wise as he discoursed on the subject using the media for dava, ways and challenges. In an attempt to solve man's most perplexing predicament, Riyaz Ansari spoke at length on man's eternal quest for meaning. 30th November 2007. Dialogue with others, needs, prerequisites and etiquettes was the topic on which Dr. Ahmad ibn Safuddin spoke with much experience, passion and candor. Asim al-Hakim hit it right and straight when he spoke with clarity on the topic signs of hypocrisy. With the grace of Allah, I believe that this conference is one of the best conventions that I've been to. Over a hundred thousand people attended the Juma Khutbah and Salah led by Sheikh Muhammad Ayyub, former Imam of the Masjid al-Nabawi, Madina. There was a separate area for dining for the speakers and the guests. The guests who visited the peace conference were met with just about every convenience and care for them to feel at home. In the revert session, Musa Ser Antonio sought to document his journey to Islam in the topic from darkness to light. Totally. Hussein Hamid Hassan, the world-renowned father of Islamic banking, spoke on the virtues of banking based on Islamic ethos and principles in his talk on the New World Islamic Financial System. 
The sheer grandeur of the conference, exhibition and the variety of topics highly relevant to today's chaotic world expounded a way of life and thought of Islam in a novel way. This in turn generated great news coverage interest as members of the mainstream media descended on the scene in large numbers to highlight and report on the conference as it unfolded. To encourage the future generation, the children of the International Islamic School presented an enactment entitled Islamic International Dawa Conference, imitating the speakers as they sported similar attire, beards and mannerisms as that of the speakers, namely Abid Zaru of Standard 6 as Ahmad Didad. Shahs Qureshi of Standard 7 as Dr. Bilal Phillips. By covering sins, faith decreases. The actions. Ismail Sheikh of Standard 6 as Dr. Jamal Badavi. Some of the specific principles. The topic Saad Siddiqui of Standard 5 as Hussain E. It's very important for you to understand the difference between Islam and Muslim. There's a lot of difference. Islam say no killing. A lot of Muslims kill each other. Islam say no drinking alcohol. A lot of Muslims drink alcohol. Islam is the religion, the teaching. Muslims are the people. The teaching is pure. The people may not be pure. Now to understand the pure teaching of Islam, you got to go back to what the Prophet said. You know that Islam is not a religion that Muhammad created by himself. No. It's not a man-made religion. Who taught Muhammad about Islam? Allah. The first thing I would like to do is clarify... Anas Bir Zada of Standard 7 as Yusuf Estes. As a preacher. One of the most Muhammad Ali Sheikh of Standard 7 as Imam Siraj Vahaj. So difficult. The word Islam is Haris Ali Qureshi of Standard 7 as Abdul Rahim Green. Are in a state of subjugation. We all Muslims are subjugated not to the thing of this world and the people of this world, but we are subjugated to Allah. Every Muslim woman is subjugated to Allah. The hate Arfat Sheikh of Standard 6 as Yasir Qadi. Call others to Islam. The topic for today is Faisal Kokni of Standard 7 as Salim Al Amri. What is the sin? Anything you do contrary to what Allah wants you to do is the sin. Anything that is not in agreement, anything that is not in line to what the Creator wants you to do is the sin. Why do we sin? Do I'm sure we have promised Allah not to commit sin. True or not? How many times you have made tawbah? Many times. How many times you have cried? Many times. But you went to the square one. True or not? <laughs> so why do we commit sin? Do we promise Allah not to commit sin? When you look into the mirror, what do you see? Abdullah Khan of Standard 7 as Yasir Fazaga. Do you feel inferior, ashamed? Or there is that pride and dignity? When you say, I have a contribution to make to mankind. We've got to learn this concept, self-image psychology. How do you see yourself? The best proof of it, it is the change of... Jashir Khan of Standard 6 as Jafar Idris. of the Arabs who accepted Islam. Religion, according to the Naik of Standard 7 as Dr. Zakir Naik. Power, a personal God or gods that deserve worship and obedience. In short, religion means belief in God. To understand the concept of God in any religion, we should not observe what the followers of that religion do. To understand the concept of God in any religion, we have to try and understand what the scriptures have to speak about Almighty God. And if we analyze the scriptures of the major world religions, they emphasize on oneness of God, on unity of God, on Tawheed. First, we'll discuss the concept of God in Hinduism. If you ask a common Hindu that how many gods does he believe in, 
some may say three, some may say thousand, some may say 33 crore, 330 million. But if you ask a learned Hindu, who's well versed in the scriptures, he will tell you that the Hindus should believe and worship in only one God. The wound. Reflecting on the nuances, trials and tribulations of the hereafter, Abdul Rahim Green elucidated on the topic, Do Good People Go to Hell? This is the biggest conference that I ever attend actually, and I find that it is fantastic, it is fantastic. And this peace conference is must spread it throughout the world. 1st December 2007 In an attempt to explain the power and relevance of Islam in today's world, Riyaz Ansari held the audience captive by his erudite exposition on the topic Islam's relevance to the sustainability of civilization. Enumerating the miracles which have happened in the history of Islam, Asim al-Hakim narrated them in his speech entitled The Islamic Spectacles. It's only sins and good deeds. No money, no property. Allah. Even the ultimate and show visitor and companion, death was not spared by Salim al-Amri, who presented his perspective of the Islamic view in his talk on the long-awaited visitor. Allah rejoices. Allah becomes happy when we turn to him in repentance bringing out the ideal nuances and political code of conduct under the Islamic purview, Hussein E. brought forth the principles in his endearing exposition on the topic Islam and politics. They are real politicians. They are leaders who serve the nation. They are leaders who serve their people. They work for the people, not the people work for them. The peace conference was also graced by Anwar Ibrahim, the ex-deputy prime minister of Malaysia and a visionary who had set up the International Islamic University of Malaysia. Dr. Zakir Naik guided him around the exhibition and conference venue. A press conference called in his honor, which was attended by most of the media. Anwar Ibrahim later spoke on certain facts of Islam and the importance of peace in his keynote address, current world affairs, challenges and opportunities for peace. Conservative interpretation and limit our scope and thinking. There are strength, and he said, of our past. We have the great strides and contribution of the Ottoman Empire, but the failure was due to this obscure, limited interpretation of Islam. Ahmad Bukhater was then called upon to render some of his lilting Nasheed songs in praise of Allah and his final prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Second December 2007, Salim al Amri warned mankind as he poured forth his thoughts on the topic Seven Obstacles in the Way to Paradise. In the dunya, we want you to make bid'ah, we want you to make microphones, we want you to make cards, all Muslims. But the deen, leave it. But the Muslims, they left the dunya for the kuffar. And the deen, where Allah told them, don't touch it, they started making their own new deen. In fact, Commenting on one of the prophets of Islam and his teachings, Dr. Bilal Phillips threw light on the topic, the true message of Jesus, peace be upon him. Jesus, that there are among Western historians those who claim he never existed. Over 2,000 dedicated volunteers supported the organized implementation of the conference and its schedule, which was highly appreciated by the public, press, and onlookers at large. Dr. Jafar Idris spoke about the vital importance and ingredients for the progress of humanity in his talk on peaceful coexistence. I am not, I'm not American. 
its own merit. Yasser Fazaga discussed the social issue angle of Islam in his well-researched talk on social justice in Islam. that are doing it are Muslims. Wrong is still wrong. I have attended many conferences in different parts of the world. And I would have to say, this at this point is the most impressive. Many people, I think that they only know Zach and Naik on TV. And they see the scholar, the person with the excellent memory. But I think for those of us who are fortunate enough to actually interact with him on a personal level, you get to see an extremely humble man, down to earth, and just a beautiful human being, you know, to hang around with. The grand finale, covering every space on the ground, this sea of humanity of hundreds of thousands of people jostled at the vast Sumaya ground to listen to Dr. Zaki Naik's dynamic and inspiring talk on Is Islam the Solution for Humanity? The candid orator, Dr. Zakir Naik, clarified misconceptions of many with his in-depth knowledge about Islam and other religions in his talk, followed by the open question and answer session spread over four and a half hours. sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword, is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. Sir, my name is Professor Sethi. I am an engineer by profession. To start with, I appreciate your hard work and pray to God to give you double your age God has allotted you. So only one question I'm not getting it, my source of income. I am also a technical analyst with stock market. I am very strong with FNO market, future and option, with a very intellectual mathematics and very intellectual playing the game. I am always secure and always in profit. Is it okay to go ahead with such income? I'm suffering from this last three years. I, I don't want to earn anything wrong. If it is wrong, I will leave that forever. The question is that, is this earning halal or haram? As far as the stock market is concerned, stock per se is not haram. As long as the stocks you deal in, it is according to the guidelines of Islam. What is haram in Islam is riba, it's interest. But share market is somewhat following the principles of Islam of profit and loss sharing. So being partner in profit and loss sharing is encouraged in Islam. As long as it is within the purview of the Islamic Sharia, as long as you do not buy shares of a company which deals in alcohol, company which deals in interest, financial companies. So if you buy shares of these companies, it's haram. Dealing in futures, it's not permitted. But pure stock, as long as the thing which you deal in, if it is Islamic, it's allowed. And that's the reason, very shortly, inshallah, inshallah, within the next few weeks or few months, inshallah, we'll be launching an Islamic investment fund in India, inshallah. Mind-boggling memory, I've never seen a person like you. And if God, if God grace, I will be at, the, at your place forever. If the God, if the Ishwar ki marzi hui, Allah ki marzi hui, to aapka shish banunga isi platform par. Inshallah, Inshallah. If Allah will, Inshallah. I'm Mrs. Bhavna, and I'm staunchly, eagerly waiting to accept Islam as my wholehearted religion. My name is Abhishek. I am accepting Islam in front of all. Ashadan la ilaha illallah, Ashadan na Muhammadan Abdu wa Rasul. Tabreel. I remember the first time I gave a talk eight days back. There was a sister there who accepted Islam. Believe me, I can't see the face. I can only see the face of the questioner who was on my left, on the first mic. I can't see your face. I can't see the face of the lady who accepted on the first day, on Saturday. I became questioning the intelligence. That where is that lady? I said, I don't even know her face. Maybe on the television you saw her. The gathering is so vast. So surely the people on the television see your face, haven't seen your face. So you can testify to the people that there was no force used on you and no one can use force on you to accept Islam. If you like it with your heart and this country of ours, this country India is one of the few countries in the world in whose constitution is mentioned that every citizen of India has the right to preach, practice, and propagate his religion. I'm proud of this country that we have the right to preach, practice, and propagate religion. 
forcing anyone to accept any religion is prohibited. This is Bhageshri Savan. I'm a non-Muslim. I want to accept Islam in front of everybody because I want all these people to be on my shahada on the day of judgment. If I say it, and you can pronounce it, you can say, Ashadu Allah ilaha. Ashadu Allah ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu anna. Wa ashadu anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no God but Allah. But there is no God but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is the servant and messenger of Almighty God. Is the servant and messenger of Almighty God. Welcome to the religion of peace, sir. Thank you. My name is Neelam Shirke. I am a Hindu family. Today, I am accepting Islam in front of everyone. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Dur Rasulullah. And we welcome you to the religion of peace. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah accept. First day, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this 10-day Islamic International Conference to be a grand success. And it's only because of Allah's help that this was possible. And secondly, I'd like to thank our learned scholars and speakers. MashaAllah has come from different parts of the world. Lastly, I'd like to personally thank that as many are aware that we have got more than 2,000 volunteers as well as all the other technical staff and the staff of the organization, we thank you all. Befitting a grand finale, the illustrious international speakers on Islam were individually given a specially crafted memento of thanks and appreciation for their individual contributions in the field of Dawah and a warm send-off by Dr. Zakir Naik personally.